A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. It's Kate and Oliver Hudson, <laughs> host of the new podcast, Sibling, Sibling Revelry. Revelry. That's right. We started this show because, you know what? No one talks about siblings and that dynamic. The siblings, they know each other better than anybody. Yes. You know. Listen to Sibling Revelry on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Episode 11, Saving Money on Travel. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Hey, y'all. This is Jen. And this is Jill. And we are your Frugal Friends on the Frugal Friends podcast. Uh, We're so excited to be here today. How are you doing? How are you doing, Jill? I'm doing great. I I am drinking some tea, warding off a sore throat. Oh. Yeah. I noticed. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to get sick. I noticed you were drinking tea instead of uh, our normal our normal beverages of choice, and I was going to ask you about that. So now I yeah. know. Well, sometimes I'll do a hot toddy. Where <laughs> I love those. Yeah, because it's good for you. But yeah, today, right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> today, for- today is tea and honey, mm. and Delicious. water and Nilla wafers. Yeah. I had a bowl of cereal uh, just before we started recording. Actually, probably a little bit while we were recording, just before we started the (laughs) real recording. (laughs) Yeah. Maybe that can be our outtake. (laughs) Just the the chomping of (laughs) Nella wafers and cereal. Yeah. Well, you'll have to stay tuned after the exit music to see. (laughs) To see. (laughs) Uh, Well, let's get into it. We'll start with our sponsors, and since we don't have any legitimate sponsors that pay us uh, legitimate money, uh, we're going to showcase our sponsors uh, in a different way. So today's episode is brought to you by Saying No. Do you want something that you can't afford and you are thinking about uh, taking out a loan or putting it on credit? Try Saying No. Say No. (laughs) It it provides delayed gratification, and you'll feel better later saying no. Perfect. That's a great sponsor. I'm a professional. You, you are a professional, and you present like a professional, and I treat you like a professional. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, our other sponsor, while they don't pay us, is a real thing. Podcast Crafter can be found at podcastcrafter.com, and they are the ones that produce our podcast, Frugal Friends. You're listening to us right now. You know us. You're hearing our voices sounding so nice like honey in your ears right now. We got that sweet audio (laughs) quality. (laughs) Because Podcast Crafter uh, has mixed and produced and propagated this podcast. So if you are starting a podcast or your business is starting a podcast or you know someone who's starting a podcast or you like to listen to podcasts and you think podcast. other people should start podcasts, <laughs> <laughs> then, then go to podcastcrafter.com and see what they can offer you. Uh, yes. All sorts of packages you can find there. So do it. To meet your podcasting needs. Yeah, awesome. Get, it, get into it. Uh, Today, we're talking about saving on travel. So this will air in July. uh, So we're in the throes of summer travel. And Mm -hmm. we talked about plane tickets in episode seven, but you should already have those. Today, we're talking about keeping costs low while you're on vacation. And this Mm -hmm. was slightly inspired uh, by the fact that your girl 
is in Women's Day magazine this what, month. What? Yeah. Explaining my favorite ways to save on travel. So if you're uh, near a grocery store or a waiting room and you see a Women's Day July version edition, I don't know, uh, pick it up and look through it and uh, you find me, Jen Smith of the Frugal Friends podcast. That's amazing. It'll actually be in the magazine, not just like online. Yeah. I thought it was just going to be online when they reached out to me. Um, and then their fact checker contacted me and I was like, oh, this is legit. Like they're going to put me in print. And so I hope that I'm not lying to all of you right now because I haven't seen it. Right. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, go check it. And uh, I'll when I see it, I'll post a picture of it. Oh, that's amazing. So excited. Yeah. Big things for you, Jen. Thank you. I'm going to buy three copies for me and my mom. <laughs> and somebody else. I'm going to buy a copy of Woman's Day for sure. That's probably why they put people like us in their uh, magazines so that they can keep selling them. Because <laughs> yeah, we're like, oh my word, that's my name. Yeah. In it's, print. It's like the newspaper. <laughs> Little did we know that we could just type our name on the computer and then print that out and we'd have our name in print. That's so different, though. That would be the frugal approach to this egotistical desire. I know. I I don't regret it, though. I'm going to be a woman's day. <laughs> yeah. Like Anyways. It. So. Okay. Let's get into it. Uh, we are talking about two articles today. Uh, The first one is just focused on like accommodations. uh, And then the second one's kind of dealing with everything else. So Mm -hmm. the first one is from uh, nomadicmat.com. And it is how to find cheap accommodations. And I have referenced this blog many times because Nomadic Mat is really good for like budget travel. Mm -hmm. And it's... uh, Definitely cool to explore your options uh, with yeah, he staying had some, places. He had some great suggestions. And not that I'm going to necessarily try all of them. I liked the thinking outside the box that he brought and just reminding me that, oh, yeah, there's there's a lot of ways that I could travel and stay someplace inexpensively. Yeah, definitely. Uh, he lists a lot. And... My favorite ones are going to be pretty obvious. So the first one is Airbnb because we are Airbnb hosts, as you know, if you listen to our housing hacks episode and specifically sharing space um, on Airbnb. So Mm -hmm. everybody lists it because it is it's cheaper. You get like a two bedroom apartment uh, every night for the price that you would pay for a hotel room with two beds. Like that's mm-hmm. a given. But I think the real hack is staying in somebody's house because you get to get the insider information on everything the city has to offer. Mm-hmm. And there's somebody there if like something goes wrong in the house and it is like half as expensive as a hotel room or even a private Airbnb. Mm -hmm. And people always ask if it's weird to like have people in your house or if it's weird to stay in other people's house, because we've done both. Like we have people in our Mm -hmm. house and I have stayed in somebody else's house with them there. Mm -hmm. And it's never been weird. It's always been really cool to have like a friend in the city. Even if you don't hang out with them, you still feel like you have somebody there and it just gives another dynamic to your vacation. Right. Yeah, I, I and I think it something like this depends on what your purpose is in traveling. So there were there's been times when I've wanted to go on vacation and it's very important to me to have a room because that like a private, not a shared space, because that's where I plan on spending most of my time. So that's a specific type of vacation. But now that I'm, I don't know, 
what what has shifted in me. But I am more concerned about having good food and sightseeing and enjoying a good time outside of the room. And I've realized that for me at this stage of life, it's not as important to have like nobody around um, <laughs> really, because that's like what you're asking for with a hotel room. But yeah, but to be engaged with the people who are there as much or as little as you want to. And then, you know, ask for recommendations, like you've said, and place a higher priority on the activities that you're going to do versus just like laying in bed all day. You Which know, you that, could still do even in a shared great. space. Yeah. Like you're not actually sharing a bed with the host. No. Like generally you have your <laughs> own room with like a locked door. So that's great. Yeah. We don't uh, share a room with our guests. <laughs> and like come to think of it, the last time I stayed in a hotel, the people on the other side of our wall were so loud and up so late. And yeah. it was a miserable experience. And I would have much rather stayed in somebody's home where mm-hmm. there's like more space between mm-hmm. our wall and the next. Mm-hmm. And N- yeah. Not to mention it makes uh, out of town weddings and those types of things that you wouldn't totally qualify under vacation status. Mm-hmm. But those types of costs can inhibit the types of vacations you can take. So if you're going to out of town weddings or conferences or trainings or what whatever, you know, things that maybe you have to pay for out of your pocket to consider an Airbnb for those types of things. If it is really important to you to like not I don't know, to be in a hotel, I don't know. Um it can save money on those expenses so that you then have more money for your vacations versus buying a hotel for a weekend. For sure. Yeah. Jill, what was uh, your favorite? Well, I really liked that this article reminded me about hostels and broke down the myth that hostels are all dormitory style. So I think that there's this idea that hostels are for young people, they're dirty, and it's like shared with a bunch of grungy people. And and I'm not saying that's not out there, but that is not all that hostels are. And this article made a good point to say that as tastes are changing and expectations are changing and people requiring more levels of comfort and reviews being a bigger thing to be able to say whether or not something was a good experience and others to have access to that online is creating this environment where hostels are upping their game. So they have more amenities. They often have Wi-Fi. Um, and, and hostels are not just dormitory style. You can buy single rooms, um, for a family or for a couple, or if you're a solo traveler, you will pay more for that. Uh, and, and less if you're going to share a room or if you're traveling with a group of people, even four, five, six, sometimes the dorms are that small that you and your friends can have that small space together. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. I've stayed in some hostels and I would say it was, it was like, that. Um, but clean, it was not, it wasn't dirty. I mean, it was simple. Um, and everybody was respectful. So bring along your earplugs and save some money. Yeah. There were some really cool looking hostels in Bali Mm. and we didn't look into them, but, uh, they were super cute. And I almost stayed in a hostel in Washington, DC Uh, But I ended up staying with some friends, but it's not just international. There are Mm -hmm. hostels like all over the U.S. too. And um, they're super clean. And yeah, you can even get private rooms at some of them. Yeah. And and then the other thing that they pointed out, which is similar to Airbnb, but free is the couch surfing. I've never Mm. done that before, Um, but. If someone's looking to see, well, what could I even get this for free? There are people who will just offer up a spot in their home that you can stay at for free. Um, And like similar layout to Airbnb and how you would book that, but only it's free. Yeah, there. this is something I would definitely do in Europe. And I know Mm -hmm. that sounds like scary, but we had couch surfers in college And they were all European and they were all super cool. Like Mm. very, it's a very common thing in Europe to do couch surfing. Yeah. 
So this is something I would definitely consider doing in Europe. And you have to think about like the type of people that would open their place for couch surfing. Mm -hmm. I think that those people are much less sketchy than the people that would try and do couch surfing. So the fact that we had really positive right. experiences uh, with our couch surfers um, makes me think that this would be really cool. Yeah. And it it wasn't just like single. Some of them were single, um, but some of them were like a couple or two people. Right. And uh, this is obviously up to your comfort level. But the yeah. article does make a good point to say that, okay, yeah, security can be a concern, but to keep in mind that the people who are doing this are oftentimes travelers themselves who have wanted to take advantage of this and know what you're going through and just want to be a help and want to share their city with you and that you can vet out where you're going to stay or if you are offering this, who is going to stay with you. You know, with simple things like, do they have a picture? Can you be talking with them ahead of time? You know, don't don't have Joe with no picture who has no activity on his account. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go stay with him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, go like uh listen to your gut. Yeah, on it. Uh yeah, and then um I also like the idea of home exchanges. Mm. Uh I have obviously never done this, but you could probably get to stay somewhere really cool uh in just an exchange like doing a home exchange. And I would love to know if there's anybody that has done this. Yeah. Uh, it sounds so cool. Yeah. I think for me, you'd have to have a cool place to start with in order for someone else to want to exchange with you, <laughs> which you do, Jen. Yeah. I could see people wanting to do that. And I actually went on the home exchange website. So that's a big one, just homeexchange.com that people will go on and they will post places. So they'll post their home, pictures of their home, and then a little bit about where they might want to go, what their flexibility is. And I mean, you could offer them something else, but they also list out like, would, would love to go to DC, you know, dates are flexible, would love to go to Spain, dates are flexible. Uh, so you can kind of see, would this be a good fit? Do they want to be anywhere near my area? Uh, could we switch, mm -hmm. you know, at the same time or there's options to do it not at the same time, not simultaneous, which and both articles mentioned this option and both reference the holiday, which if you've ever seen that mm -hmm. video, that's kind of what put this idea on the map a little bit and broke down some of those barriers to people maybe feeling weird about it. I mean, you probably won't have that experience that's portrayed in the holiday. You could but... find your one true love. <laughs> yeah. You could fall in love. You could fall in love. You never know. You could, you could definitely fall in love. Yeah. Um, but I do definitely plan to try this one day, uh, either like simultaneous or not because we have like the Airbnb room that we can just block out, but to be continued. Yeah. And then on this article, the one that I really just think is out of the box, but definitely attainable and will probably want to do this someday, but staying at a monastery. So, I had no clue this was a thing. Yeah. So with monks or nuns, they will often, I, so sometimes they'll offer it for free or for a donation or maybe up to $50 a night. It really depends. Um, but just very simple lodging where you can come and stay with them. Sometimes meals are included and just really getting into that lifestyle and seeing, you know, just a totally different way of living, I think would be interesting. I me. feel like that would be a destination in and of itself. Yeah, definitely. Um, they did say sometimes they'll have curfew and different things like that, but just what an experience that would be. Not only cheap uh, accommodations, but just totally different lifestyle. Yeah. And the article has links to four other articles just about staying in monasteries. So if that is something that sounds interesting to you. Definitely check out the article because this is something people actually do. And that mm -hmm. that is cool. Um, and it also mentions farm stays. Uh, like if you've ever heard of woofing, 
which is... I have um, never heard of that. When I read it, really? I was like, how do I pronounce this? It was just a lot of <laughs> capital letters. And it sa- it like just seems so extreme that I'm like, what is this referencing? Okay. What, what I have to be honest. Acronym? I didn't know there was two W's in Wolfing. It's W-W-O-O-F. And it was all capitalized. And I was like, yeah. I probably shouldn't be looking at this. It probably <laughs> means something I don't want to know about. No, you just work on the farm in exchange for your lodging. Um, or it's, uh, diff- it's like cheaper lodging. I think they give the range, it's like about 40 US dollars a night, some places, but you also get to like have a farm experience. So, but what does it, woofing mean? Uh, woofing is, uh, an acronym and maybe I'll just have to Google it. Oh, so you've uh, heard of this, but you don't know yeah. what it means. I don't, I don't know what woofing stands for it stands for worldwide opportunities on organic farms so it doesn't always have it does always have a double 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 w wow um but worldwide doesn't isn't necessarily two words but it's all all over the world (laughs) you can do it anywhere all right now i know i learned something new Yes, worldwide opportunities on organic farms. <laughs> we know New Year's resolutions often don't stick. In fact, on average, they last around 30 days. So if saving money is on your 2024 resolution list, here's a foolproof way to stick to yours. Switch your phone provider to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. For those of you paying close to 40 bucks a month for just one phone line, this means a savings of $300 over the course of the year. We especially like Mint because all plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash frugal. That's mintmobile.com slash frugal. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash frugal. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing. And of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less, like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic. Oracle.com slash strategic. Cool. Oh, I love people. Now you you know where to stay and... (laughs) When you get there, you're going to want to get out of the Airbnb like Jill does now, and you're going to want to do stuff. So Mm -hmm. you're going to want to find cheap things. So our next article is for moneying, uh, moneying. I always read that and I never have to say it out loud. It's by David Ning. So that's why it's money Ning. Yeah. So oh, hard to say moneying, out loud, though. Like just moneying, but moneying. Yeah, uh, but it's fifty budget travel tips to save money on vacations. And so, actually, when you search for things on how to save money, uh, you will see a lot of articles that just say cut your expenses so that you can afford travel. That's what <laughs> all the travel bloggers are saying. Just like sell your house, sell your car like get on a prepaid phone plan uh, or eliminate your phone. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, <more> it's, so. <laughs> it's just the personal finance bloggers that are like, heck, we've already, 
we've already eliminated everything else. (laughs) What can we do to eliminate our expenses on travel? So that's why we're looking at finally a personal finance blogger. Um, So yeah, he has 50 tips and some of the tips are things that we covered on our um, our flights episode. And some of them are things that Nomadic Matt covered. Um, but some of them are, are really different. Like I love that he says like to plan your meals, like not eat every meal out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that we just take it for granted that we're going to eat every meal out and we budget for that. But you don't necessarily have to budget all of that in. Like most likely wherever you're going, there's going to be a grocery store. Uh, I had some friends that went to Hawaii recently and they went to a grocery store. Everything is more expensive on Hawaii, but Mm -hmm. they, you know, they got the stuff for PB and J and they would eat PB and J lunches, like wherever Mm -hmm. they would go. Um, they did a lot of hiking, so they would bring it with them. So it's like convenient if you want to do activities like that too, then you don't get hangry, like waiting to find a a restaurant during whatever you're doing. I do feel like this is a great tip. And again, this speaks to priorities, like prioritize being in that place that you are and experiencing it and enjoying it. Because I think the biggest downfall is food and spending Mm -hmm. way too much money on food, feeling like that's the only experience there is to have in a place. Um, And just maybe lowering expectations or that, or prioritizing when you're going to enjoy that really good meal, but otherwise, yeah, grabbing some, some bagels and fruit and just doing that for breakfast in the morning. Don't, don't go out for that. Um, or stay at a place that will offer you free breakfast. And then I liked the tip number 12 was talking about eating more at lunch. So going and having your nice big meal at lunch when the costs are generally less expensive, you can enjoy a steak or seafood or whatever you're into at a reduced cost than you would enjoying that same thing at dinner. The prices just are different. Um, so maybe even trying to switch up your big meal to be lunch and then eating a little bit less or, uh, less luxury at dinner. Yeah. And lunches sometimes will end really late. So you, it's Mm -hmm. kind of just like an early dinner. Sure. Yeah. I, I love eating, going out for lunch. Mm -hmm. It's so fun. And, and even if you are, going to like bring sandwiches or something for lunch, then you know that you, I feel better like affording a bigger dinner. If I know that I don't have to eat out for every meal, if I'm eating like something I made for breakfast and lunch, I feel okay about going out for dinner. Right. Agreed. Yeah. Um, my other favorite was, um, about, car rental insurance Mm. and knowing that you don't always need car rental coverage because sometimes your personal car insurance will actually cover that. You just have to make sure. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you are um, comfortable with using credit cards, some of those will include car rental coverage if you book the car with that card. Mm -hmm. Uh, I went to Nashville one year and, uh, I was, it was the first time that I rented a car and I was super nervous because I was unfamiliar with Nashville and I was like driving this little VW bug, like convertible. And it was so small. And I was like, I, I don't know whether I should get the coverage. So like, I ended up getting it and nothing happened and like nothing happened because I got the coverage. That's like how Murphy's law works. But, (laughs) but I didn't even check, uh, my personal coverage and it turns out that it did cover that. Oh, that's a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. I think this car rental topic was a good one too. That stood out to me as well. And they've got some good tips in there, but I think pointing out these pitfalls that can happen with car rentals is important. So, Um, making sure that 
you fill up the car yourself rather than opting for the company to fill up the car. So, uh, and just reading through all the fine print. So when you are returning the car, make sure it's full because otherwise they're going to charge you to fill up, even if they only have to put a gallon in, they're going to charge you as if they had to fill the entire tank and normally at, at a pretty high price per gallon amount. So make sure that you do that. And then also the agreement that you have with the car rent rental company. Um, so I've done a lot of car rentals through like Priceline and some of these budget, uh, budget websites. And it, it can be really tricky. Like they'll make it look really nice. Like, oh, you know, only this amount for this amount of time. But then in parentheses, it'll be up to X amount of miles. So then if you drive over that amount of miles, you're going to pay mm-hmm. X amount of dollars. So making sure that it's unlimited miles in the deal that you're getting. Um, so just really reading the fine print because they, they do try to get you. Yeah. And some people might be thinking like, well, why would you even get a rental car? That doesn't sound very frugal. But sometimes you can get cheaper accommodation staying a little ways away from where you have to be and getting a rental car. Like that's when Mm -hmm. I got the rental car in Nashville. It was cheaper for me to stay with a friend like 15, 20 minutes away from the conference that Mm -hmm. I was attending than it was to stay on site at the conference. And so that was, I mean, I I got a deal on the rental car. So it was, ended up being cheaper, more frugal option. So it is always worth like doing the cost analysis on staying a little outside the city and getting a rental car versus um, staying within the city and doing like uh, public transit. Right. Or constant Ubers. Yeah. Which sometimes Ubers are not that bad depending on where you're going. But like here, they can be really pricey and it's oftentimes worth it to get a rental car. Uber has just always been expensive for my taste. But I'm like, I'm going two miles away. How is it $15? I know, but some people, so there's been a like uptick in people getting rid of their cars. Oh, man. uh, and just Ubering where they need to go. And they say it saves them money. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe like when it comes down to what you'd pay in maintenance, like maybe. And if you're not going that many places. Right. So if you, moly, if you work from home, yeah. uh, I think, I think all these people work from home too. And yeah, they, that makes sense. yeah, you don't have to commute. You don't have to pay insurance and gas and mm-hmm. maintenance. Uh, so I commend them. Uh, I don't love working from home Mm and remembering public transportation in these, like if you're traveling in a city, it's important to remember that public transportation is a thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think especially for people from the suburbs, it's, it can think be, Oh, taxi or Uber or Lyft or these different things. And, um, Eric and I have done just fine figuring out public transportation. And then you get to meet people who live in the area on those buses and figure out the spots to check out and that kind of a thing. So I think it's also just the way that you're approaching vacation and being willing to try these different things out and then desiring to meet the locals to get a more authentic experience. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, another tip, if you are going international, Mm -hmm. uh, the he mentions the um like the currency transfer like fees yes. um you can it's definitely cheaper to get your cash um transferred overseas like at your destination but uh it's even cheaper to just take out cash from ATMs there and uh we took out the um we got a Charles Schwab checking account. So you are probably familiar with Schwab for investments, but they also have a checking account that has no international fees at any ATM. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got one of those, put 500 bucks on it, and then just use that as an ATM card over there because it's cheaper and safer um, than carrying cash and getting it exchanged over there. 
Oh, that's a great tip, Jen. Yeah. I'm, I'm and, actually writing that down for myself. Uh, and our debit card was actually stolen while we were in Bali. That's right. And we were able to just very quickly cancel the card and like nothing was taken out. So it's great. super safe. Charles Schwab um, is very easy to work with in that regard. And uh, great if you're going overseas. Way to go, Charles. Hey, <laughs> Isn't Bill short for Charles? Uh, Isn't that like a possible abbreviation? Or is that I don't Chuck? know, but I, there's some weird. I, it's Chuck. <laughs> but I, I see where you're going with this. <laughs> does that mean Jill? Jill, does that mean it's time for <gasps> the, the Bill, Bill of the, of the Week? week. <laughs> Right. It's time for the best minute of your entire week. Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton. This is the bill of the week. Hey, Jen and Jill, this is Chris from Popcorn Finance. I just want to say, first of all, that I really love the podcast and I hope you keep doing it. I look forward to it each week. And my bill of the week is my car registration bill uh, is because I didn't have to pay it because uh, like most people, when it came in the mail, I was angry because I forgot about it and I didn't want to surprise bill. Uh, but then a couple of days later, the car dealership where I got the car sent me a check for $5 more than my car registration cost. Uh, so it's my bill of the week because it ended up costing me nothing and I got to keep a $5 bill at the end of everything. So I guess I have uh, two bills of the week this week. It's my car registration bill that I didn't have to pay and the $5 bill that I got to keep and spend on whatever I want. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, if so you great. want to uh, submit a bill of the week, you can visit frugalfriendspodcast.com slash bill to call our Google voicemail or email us a voice memo to frugalfriendspodcast at gmail.com. We would love to hear uh, what your bill is this week. Uh, like it. Charles Schwab or Chuck. Definitely. If, if your just bill is like, a Chuck. Just like Chuck, uh, <laughs> Bill also exists. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, don't you remember in Charlie Brown when um, the little girl would always call Charlie Chuck? I didn't yeah? really watch that very much. Okay. Sorry. Well, <laughs> that's... But moving on. I'm trying to relate, but whoops. <laughs> yeah. This episode is brought to you by saying no to your <laughs> podcast host, co-host. And she says she doesn't watch the peanuts. Also or brought even to you read by the honesty and not lying, even <laughs> if it would make your friend feel better. <laughs> Touche. Yeah. We're an Instacart family. Oh my goodness, we saved so much time with same-day grocery delivery. So we joined Instacart Plus. And now we're saving more money. We get unlimited free delivery on orders over $35. 5% credit back on pickup. And a family account to shop together. Did you know members save $460 a year when they order at least once a week? I do now. See how much you'll save. Visit instacartplus.com for two weeks free. Average savings exclude membership fee. Individual savings may vary. Credit back excludes alcohol. Paid membership auto renews. Additional terms apply. This episode is brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Union. It's a special thing to be a member of Navy Federal because they are a member-owned, not-for-profit credit union that invests in its members with amazing rates and low fees. That's why members could earn and save more every year. Plus, they serve all branches of the armed forces, veterans, and their families. So if you're interested in becoming a member, learn more at NavyFederal.org. At Navy Federal Credit Union... Our members are the mission, insured by NCUA. Good well, one. Anyways, anyways, uh, move on from that mm -hmm. heart sore. <laughs> uh, let's get down to some, let's get to some ph philosophical questions. All right. Let's get serious mm. right now. Okay. I'm ready um, for it. So a lot of people that listen to this podcast um, might be trying to get out of debt. And it's 
definitely when you're getting out of debt, you are the worst you're ever going to be at being frugal. It's just hands down. <laughs> you only get better from here. I wow. Can- that's good to know. Yeah. It only gets better. Uh, and so a big thing that people struggle with while they're trying to get out of debt is should you go on vacation? Mm. And some people say, no, you should go totally scorched earth. Some people are, (laughs) some people are like, I'm going to Hawaii. I deserve it. And I'll just sacrifice everywhere else. Mm. Um, our experience was that we, we did take vacations. So we got out of $78,000 of debt in under two years. And we went very like minimal in our budget, but we still took several quote unquote vacations. Mm-hmm. We, um, we took a, we went on a family vacation, which was not my choice of a vacation. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I love Travis's family. I did not love where we were traveling to. Mm. Uh, what was it like New Jersey or something? Oh God, that would have been better. We went to (laughs) Myrtle Beach, South Carolina and yeah, Mm. it was red tide and everything was so busy and dirty. And I guess I just have high standards for vacations. Well, yeah. When you live where you live, then it's hard to beat. I I was like, why did I come all the way up here for this beach (laughs) when my beach is better? Yeah. Yeah. That would be difficult. Uh, but it was very inexpensive, obviously, because it was subsidized by uh, the rest of the family. And uh, we also went to Chicago um, on like a friend's trip. That was like right when we were starting paying off debt. So we hadn't refined our budget or our spending habits yet. Mm-hmm. But we we pretty much decided that two years was enough time that we didn't have to do anything big and we wouldn't feel like we were missing out. Right. And, uh, so then we got to, you know, since we've been debt free, we've been on a cruise, we went to Bali, we're planning more trips and obviously we don't feel bad about going on them now. And so, yeah. Yeah. How do mm-hmm. you feel about this subject, Jill? Yeah, I think it's a good question to ask. But to me, I kind of relate this to do you deserve to rest even in the midst of having debt? And to me, that answer is obvious. Like, yes, you do. There's always going to be reasons to not rest. And the per- you know the people who are the greatest at beating themselves up would love to just say, <laughs> no, I don't deserve anything. And I'm never going to have fun again until this burden is off of me. Uh, But reality is, is that I think it's necessary. Now, how we define vacation and what that looks like, Mm -hmm. I think does need to vary whether or not you're in debt. Because reality is, is your money's not your money if you owe other people money. (laughs) Amen. Uh, So I think that yes, you can vacation, but do it frugally, do it wisely, do it in, you know, not breaking the bank and being a good steward of what, what money you do have to put towards that. So, uh, we, Eric and I do, we travel often and people sometimes look at us because not only do I still have school debt to pay off, but we don't make a lot of money. So it's like this nice little tornado of how do you guys eat, uh, much less vacation. (laughs) (laughs) but we figure it out (laughs) yeah Um, you do yeah it doesn't it does involve uh visiting friends and enjoying family vacation and going local and yeah a lot of combinations of things yeah eating inexpensively not being picky about what it is we're doing or seeing Mm -hmm. not not paying for those expensive sightseeing things but you know, doing our own thing. So yeah, we do it, but we do it wisely. Yeah. There's always free uh, attractions um, and free events. If you can plan little weekend trips around it, Uh, Mm -hmm. you know, should you be going to Hawaii or all inclusive resorts uh, while you're trying to pay off debt? Like it's a different story if you're Mm -hmm. in debt and you're not trying to pay it off. Like Mm -hmm. it's just another level. 
But I mean, that's you, a good point. But I will say yeah. that all inclusive sometimes are less expensive than even traveling locally. But continue. <laughs> <laughs> I I would love to know your tips on all inclusive resorts. <laughs> Oh, man, we uh, have found some deals that include airfare and everything. Oh, my but, gosh. Send yeah. your girl some deals. Yeah. I mean, they're not hard to find. Like Groupon, will ha- you have to be flexible and go yeah. last minute and that kind of a thing. But, yeah, I mean, we've done it for like $600 each, including airfare. So you're talking food, lodging, airfare, everything. No hidden costs. You just get there, and it was $600. mm Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. But I mean, while you're trying to pay off debt, if that is a goal yeah. that you have, uh, you just have to, you have to pr- prioritize. And I love what Jill said about like, do you deserve to rest? And the answer is, is yes, but no, uh, what fills you up mm-hmm. and, and don't just assume it's going to be international travel mm-hmm. or, uh, lying by a beach somewhere mm-hmm. because those Things look really good on Instagram, but Mm -hmm. uh, they may not fill you up and they may not be restful for you. And And you don't need to prove anything to anybody on social media. Yeah, right. That's good. Good word. Yeah. And also, like, remember that the next morning when you wake up, it really didn't matter to you whether you ate a grilled cheese the night before or you had a steak the night before. That's just my mentality. Like when I'm ordering something, I can feel like, oh, but I really want that amazing thing that looks so yummy on the menu. But 10 hours from now, that's going to mean nothing. So just save the money. I know. You probably uh, lose a lot of weight with that mentality, too. That's why <laughs> That's, you're so thin, Jill. That is, I was, in our clothing episode, that was going to be one of my tips was just, was portion control means that I don't have to constantly be buying new clothing because all my clothes always fit me. <laughs> yeah. Health and frugality goes hand in hand. Yes, it does. Stay healthy, maintain your weight, help your clothing budget, everything. It's all interwoven. That way, when you do go on that frugal vacation, you look fine. <laughs> Bring it back around. <laughs> yeah. This episode brought to you by saying no to eating all of your food. We didn't know what a good sponsor we had this week. No, we (laughs) came up with it 10 seconds before we started recording. (laughs) That was your brainchild. I'll let you have that one, Jen. Thank you. Thank Mm -hmm. you. Oh, well, do you have anything else to say about uh, traveling traveling frugally? I I have another idea for anybody who might be interested in this, but renting RVs. I think is a great way Mm. to travel and explore. Um, It's far less expensive than doing a road trip and buying hotels along the way or making part of it a flight, all those things. Um, You can rent RVs and do however long of a road trip that you want to do. Obviously, you still have to pay for gas and all of that, but you have your home right there and you don't have to worry about, you can be more flexible that it doesn't have to be, we have to get to this hotel on Wednesday night because we have a reservation. Um, Yeah, you can kind of, so Eric and I did that in the RV that we owned and it was a great frugal way of traveling. And so I could see people even enjoying renting RVs um, and I can put a link to an RV rental on our show notes, which side note, show notes are a thing. And we offer all the links to the things that we're talking about and then some. So there, there's some great nuggets there. Um, and, but I would also say that people could even consider buying an inexpensive trailer or motor home, doing their vacation and selling it for what they bought it for. Exactly. That would definitely you can do that. be something that I would consider because like, if you're going to spend, you know, X amount of dollars up to a thousand dollars on a vacation, why not invest that? So invest that in something that you can use, serve a purpose, then turn around and sell it. So Eric and I did this with our scooter. When we went on our RV road trip, we wanted a way to get around the places once we're there. And a lot of these were cities, so we couldn't take our massive RV like into downtown 
wherever. So we bought a scooter before we left. So we were able to um, put that on the back of our motorhome. So we weren't hauling anything. So that didn't, you know, tack on a ton of gas mileage or anything. Um, and then we had a way to get around, an expensive way to get around while we were in these places. And then we recently sold our scooter for basically what we bought it for. So we basically had like a, a car rental or a vehicle rental that didn't mm-hmm. cost us anything. So for me, that that was valuable. And even if That's we awesome. lost a hundred dollars on the whole transaction, like that was worth it to have the transportation during that month long road trip. So just those types of things to consider in traveling, um, just thinking outside the box. And if there's ways that you can make your travel an investment that you could turn around and sell is I think worthwhile. Yeah. And you can get those like pop-up campers for super cheap. And if you get one that's dirty and you clean it up, when you go to sell it, you can definitely make money off of it. Yeah. Yeah. So think outside the box and share with us if you've got more tips that you've come up with or things that have worked for you. I know we all would love to hear it, get more ideas, keep living frugally. So you can join us on our Facebook group, Frugal Friends Podcast. You can find us on Facebook and then ask to join our group. And we'd love to have you in the community. Yeah. It's called Frugal Friends Community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we talk about the episodes. We talk about upcoming episodes. And we speak in emojis and GIFs. So, (laughs) yeah, yeah, well, thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Uh, If you like the message we're spreading, you can support us best by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts and hitting the subscribe button to get new episodes every Frugal Friends Friday. Reviews help us out so much. They are what legitimizes us in the Apple Podcasts directory and helps other people find out more ways to be frugal and save money. And like Jill said, you can join our Facebook group at frugalfriendspodcast.com slash group. And uh, we have a lot of fun in there getting to know each other and helping each other uh, discuss more ways to save money. And visit the show notes for all the links uh, that we talked about today. And uh, we'll see you next week. See you next week. Looking forward to it. Frugal Friends is produced, edited, and mixed by Eric Siriani. A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. Dive into family tales, explore the human mind, and laugh with guests like Joel and Benji Madden. It's more than a podcast. It's a celebration of the ties that bind us. And it's fun because we've decided to open it up to really like all kinds of different siblings. And it's going to be an awesome season. Listen to Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.